So you can see by looking at the hook here that the front bead I put on running the tip of the hook through the wide side of the bead and the back bead, the second bead, is beaded as you normally would. Point of the hook goes through the narrow end. And that's so they butt up nose to nose. Uh, it's going to give the band on the worm a little bit more of a cleaner edge on the outside uh, and give us kind of a cool look when we fill that in with clear coat at the end. So after you have that hook beaded, you're going to bring in your white 70 denier. And our index point for the first half of this pattern is the hook point. So we want to stay at or behind that point. So get my thread attached here and I'm going to wrap to the rear. I'm going to go down the hook bend just a little bit. And then return that thread right up to just behind the hook point. I'll let it hang there. I'm going to come in with one strand of the sexy floss here. And I'm just going to catch the end of it right at or about that point And then wrap rearward over the top of it down to that same point where I stopped my thread and then return the thread right up to that same index location. I'm going to snip this off about one and a half times the length of the hook shank. And then at that exact same point, I'm going to tie in another piece. A couple firm wraps and then I'm just going to lay the thread over here off to the side. I get that taken care of. I'm going to wrap this back. I want to keep a decent amount of tension on this as I try to put down some side-by-side -side wraps. Once I get there, I'm just going to unwind those couple wraps. Come over the top of this, and as you put pressure on this, the thread will bite down into this material. And that'll help you secure that and let that hang off out of the way. And because of the clear coat finish on this, I'm simply going to throw in a couple quick half hitches to hold this stuff in place. So once I have that in there, I'm going to go in, I'll snip my thread, snip the sexy floss, come in with just a touch of zappa gap right there, and slide these beads back. I'm going to press and hold this for about 10 seconds. Once I feel like that's pretty well locked down and secured and in place, I'm going to come right in the front of the beads, I'll lay down, secure that same white 70 denier, take it right up by the eye of the hook, Snip that off. Bring this in. I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it just over the thread. I want this portion sticking out in the front to be however long I want that front portion to be. So I'm going to lay it down. I can, once again, I come over the top of the thread surface, just kind of give it a pinch. And if I hold it, see, it's going to kind of slide on the thread. Once I lay that wrap down, it's just going to lock it in place. I'm going to wrap right back to where the bead is. I'm going to let that thread hang and very simply. I'm going to wrap this right up behind the eye of the hook and it'll kind of twist on you as you wrap. If you just put your finger over it, let those twists kind of unravel and then we're going to take it right back to the bead. Remember, this is the wide end of the bead. So you are going to have a little bit of a void there that you can play with and kind of fill with the material. Once you feel like you have it pretty proportionate there, about a little less than the width of the bead, you can lock it down with a couple wraps of thread and snip off that excess. Same concept here, I'm going to come in, throw in a couple quick half hitches, and snip my thread. I'm going to bring in my clear coat. I've gone to primarily using the Deer Creek, and this is their diamond find. Not the flexible, this is the hard stuff. So I'm going to lay that over the top, and then I'm just going to come in with the bodkin. And I'm going to use a rotary function just to rotate this. Rotate it in the front. I'm going to go into that gap right in between the beads. And then write a little groove on the back side of the bead. And I'm just kind of spreading this out just to give it a kind of a nice smooth natural taper. Something that's going to look a little bit more realistic as far as the band on the worm. Keep that moving so it doesn't sag or droop on any one side. And rotate this in my light. I feel like that front piece is a little bit long, so I'm going to come in, snip it. This is the purple coloration of the Sexy Floss. I like to tie it also in a pink and in a red. Uh, it doesn't quite have the thick profile as the Squirmy Wormy does, but it also sinks a heck of a lot faster.